This episode is proudly supported by Open Table. Nearly one third of diners are booking same day. So they're making those decisions on the spot. And 10% are, do- are making their bookings within just a few hours. And so it's why it's so important to have you know, booking software like Open Table, which allows your diners to discover you. And so when restaurants are on platforms like Open Table, they're much more likely to be discovered. We help diners to connect to restaurants. Ultimately, having technology, using technology, helps you to reattach to those diners. Experience the power of Open Table. For an exclusive offer, visit restaurant.opentable.com.au forward slash DITW. Food is just an integral part of life. And you, you can access people's emotions through food. I've got people coming out the front and they try the cheese and you just see their faces. And that's what attracted me to it. And that's sort of what, why I do it and why I keep going. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Coolman Cheese Company is located in the heart of the Riverina an area renowned for its abundance of high-quality produce, especially dairy products. It's here that cheesemaker Jen Nesta creates an innovative range of handcrafted cheeses that are essential delight. So it's, uh, we're the Riverina region, um, and it's a real food belt of New South Wales. So um, there's a lot of passion and a lot of, a lot of producers locally that that produce amazing produce. The first thing with making any style of cheese is getting a really good quality milk. You can't make good cheese with bad milk. So Riverina milk is is different to where I um, trained as a cheesemaker in Gippsland. Um, It actually tastes different and it behaves differently as well. So I find that the produce that I make from the Riverina milk is, um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. At the moment, we get our milk from Riverina Fresh, so we have a multi- multitude of farms that supply, um, and obviously the breed of cow that supplies the milk gives us a lot of, of um, room to play with. So, for example, uh, there's a fair few Jersey farms that supply us, which give us increased fat, um, and then you've got your Holstein Frisians, uh, which are pretty pretty stable with the, the old um, protein levels and fat levels. So, um, And it's clean milk, which is the most important thing. While growing up, Jen had an incredible connection to the land and real food, which provided the foundation to her approach to her craft. Oh, my parents were mad cooks. They were real foodies. So my dad used to just make Chinese banquets and Indian feasts. And so I grew up eating home-cooked food all the time. I didn't have any fast food experiences growing up. So I've got a real appreciation for food in its purest form. I had five kids very close together. so. I had four under two in actual fact. So I didn't work for quite some time. And when I when the youngest went to school, I just thought, you know, I'd love to be a chef, but that's not really family friendly. Um, and so I, I saw a job for an assistant cheesemaker and I applied for that. And they said, no, we never had a female cheesemaker before. And they stuck me in the packing room, which I detested. Um, But it took about three months before I was in production and then six months I was running the white end, which is mainly the white cheeses, Um, and then the blue end and then the whole lot. And then six years later I'm going, okay, I'm sick of making the same six cheeses. I'll move interstate and make 16. Great cheese is a real art form, but to make it, their important steps to get right along the way. Well, cheese making is all about temperature. Um, so it's the temperature that you run your milk at. Um, it's the room temperature, and then obviously there's um, yeah maturing temperature. The it, depending on what style of cheese you make. So I say if I'm making a native flavoured cheese. Um, 
you start with the milk at 36 and once you've developed a, a level of thickness on the skin of your curd, you then have to add um, hot water to that to cook it up and that's a very, very um, delicate sort of point because if you overcook it and your her curd becomes too rubbery, your cheese at the end of the, the day will be very dry. Food is just an integral part of life and pe you, you can access people's emotions through food. It's a very, it's a very warm thing. And I think the people people nowadays are appreciating the art form of food production a lot more than they used to. And it is an art form. I mean, you've got people, very creative people, creating products and and that are just, yeah, they really touch you. I've got people coming out the front and they try the cheese and you just see their faces and that's what attracted me to it and that's sort of what why I do it and why I keep going and pushes me on I suppose. Coolman have a range of 16 cheeses which keeps Jen and her team very busy. Uh, so at the moment I'm making two blue cheeses so I'm making a double cream soft blue um, and I'm also making a, f a bigger stronger body of blue and I also am making a Tilsit style wash rind and obviously um, I make a double cream brie and a couple of varieties of that. I do a Merlot flower brie, which is the brie rolled in um, the mark, which is the seeds and grapes dried and ground, seeds and skins dried and ground. Um, that provides beautiful texture, which really pairs well with the, um, the creaminess of the cheese. I'm doing a coffee brie at the moment too, which is an interesting one. And then I've got feta, German-style cream cheese and a native flavoured range. So we do alpine pepper, uh, river mint, desert raisin and lemon myrtle. So that's a, that's a harder cheese, um, a gouda style. So, yes, there's a few. Uh, also, we're doing a lactose-free range. So a lot of the cheeses are made lactose-free. It's quite an easy process to do. The curd behaves differently. It's a lot softer, so you have to be a lot more careful when you're making the cheese and adapt your processes, not too much, just slightly, just so you don't damage the curd too much just with the softness. Um, so that was a challenge, but I've been making it for a couple of years now and, uh, yeah, I've pretty much nailed it. We don't have too many failures anymore, which is good. Surprisingly enough, my favourite cheese to make is actually one of the simplest and uh, it's the German-style cream cheese, the quark. Um, when you make a really, really good quark, the flavours are clean, they're concise and it's a joy to eat. Ultimately, then I go for the soft blue because that's an insanely good cheese. With an extensive range and a small team, every day is different, but incredibly full. Typically, we get milk delivered. Um, we pump it into a holding tank downstairs, uh, which is refrigerated. Um, I will make, I grow my own starter cultures, so... Um, I feel you get a lot better flavour profiles when you grow your own starter cultures up. Um, pasteurise the milk. We use batch pasteurisation, so that takes quite some time. And, yeah, so generally every day is completely different but full. So at the moment we, uh, Harris Farms, are taking uh, our lactose-free brie, soft blue and blue vein, the bigger blue, um, we have two providors, which is a distributor in Sydney, and they distribute to uh, mainly to restaurants. We have a number of places in um, locally in Wagga that uh, take our cheese, and then there's a few other smaller places in um, wineries like Yaron, Chemo Estate. Uh, yeah, so they're sort of scattered all over the place, but we haven't really gone down the big distributor route yet. Milk is different. 
not only every season, but every week, and keeps Jen and her team on their toes. It's very hands-on and the milk changes quite frequently and you have to adapt your processes out on the on the go as you go along, especially in the artisan um, style of cheese making. And it's just those little things that you do every day to combat issues like the milk I've got today was from yesterday, which was a 40 degree day. So it's not going to have the water levels in it that I had last week. So I'm going to have to treat that differently in order to keep consistency in the products that I'm making. I forgot to put starter culture in once um, and I had a complete panic attack because I'd already set the cheese, which is with rennet to coagulate it. Um, and I'd already cut the cheese ready to stir it. And I phoned my mentor and he goes, just chuck a big carton of um, starter culture in and stir it in and we'll see how we go. And surprisingly enough, it turned out really quite well. Jen may foster doubts about her own ability, but she has had pretty extraordinary global recognition. Uh, 2019, uh, we entered the World Cheese Awards in uh, Italy and our brie received a bronze. It was the only Australian brie to receive an award, so that was good. Um, and then the following year, uh, we won uh, the JSOL product, uh, DIAA awards. Um, we won most innovative product for 2020 with the lactose free brie. Uh, it sort of validates my ability, I suppose, in a way. I'm one of these people that always doubt um, doubt my ability, um, when, whereas I know I can actually do things. But, um, yeah, that was just validation that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. For Jen, it's all about seeing the joy in people's faces upon experiencing the fruits of her labour. It's a sense of purpose, I suppose. Um, it, I, it was always great bringing up kids and I did that to the best of my ability and whatever I do, I do at 120%. So the kids watch me and they're incredibly proud of everything I'm achieving and I think that in itself is um, it's, it's, it's something very special. I love making people happy and when you see them eat something that you've made and you look at their faces and they just they're happy um that's yeah that makes me happy Coolerman is a wonderful example of drive determination and passion and it's helped to create one of australia's most unique cheeses too This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.